In our first uh, geometry unit that we cover this year, we, we do a geometry unit a little bit later, but um, we're going to talk about volume today. So our standard is 8GM2. This is an 8th grade standard. We're solving real world and other mathematical problems that involve volume of cones, spheres, and pyramids. The standard also includes surface area, but that will be a separate lesson tomorrow. So the first uh, term, the only term today is volume. So please write this in your notes. Volume are the number of cubic units that are needed to fill a given space. So a lot of times um, when students are asking, you know, I don't understand volume, we talk about a pitcher or a cup or a glass, and it's filling it with something, water, sand, rocks. Volume is filling a given space. So this is three-dimensional. So the first formula is the volume of a cone. Now you won't have to memorize any formulas. You'll always be given formulas, but please write this one down in your notes. <coughs> And also try your best to draw a picture of a cone. And then label the height, and this is, ends up being the radius of the base. So the volume of a cone is 1 3rd pi r squared h. Remember that the base of a cone is a circle. So the r is the radius of that circle. Remember that the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the outside edge. So for our example for volume of a cone, for practice, I'm going to first write the formula. Volume equals 1 third pi r squared h. And we're just going to fill in the pieces. So 1 third times pi, remember pi is a number. The radius here is 3, so we're going to square 3, and the height is 7. Uh, this is simply a number crunching a formula, so you're just going to multiply all of that together. There are two ways to do one-third in your calculator. You can do one divided by three, and then hit the equals button, and that should give you 0 0.3 repeating, and from there, you can multiply times pi, times three squared, and then times seven. Or you can just do 0.333333 in your calculator till you run out of room, since we do know that that's one-third. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 1 divided by 3, and that does give me 0.3 repeating. Then I'm going to multiply it times pi. So you want to use the pi button and not um, 3.14. And I think maybe on iStep last year, they had you go, if you wanted to just use digits of pi instead of the pi button, you could do 3.14159 um, is how far out it went. So if you're not going to use the pi button, you need to make sure you go out to 3.14159. And I'm going to put a little note up here. Or the pi button. Okay, so I've done 0 0.3 repeating times pi. Now I'm going to multiply it times 9 because that's 3 squared. And then times 7. And let's round to the nearest, um, we'll just do hundredths. So that's 65.97 and for volume, it's units cubed, so centimeters cubed. I'll typically tell you on homework um, what decimal place to round out to. I just didn't do it here in the notes. So we'll do the hundredths today. Next is the volume of a sphere. So do your best to draw a sphere. It's usually a circle with this kind of like oblong, almost football shape ellipse in the middle where the back part is dotted to try to give depth to that object. So the formula for volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Again, r is the radius. So if you slice a sphere in half, you're looking at a circle, so it's the radius of the circle. Basically from the center of the sphere, or excuse me, the center of that circle to an outside edge. So here's your example of the sphere, and they give the radius of 9. So if we do volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, whoops, and then our radius is 9, so it's 4 over 3 times pi times 9 cubed. Now some of you, if you don't not sure what 9 cubed is, you might have to multiply that out first. 
Remember, it's multiplication, so order doesn't really matter. So in my calculator, I would do something like this. 9 times 9 times 9 times pi. I'm pressing the pi button. And then to do 4 thirds, you can multiply by 4 and then divide by 3. So I'm going to do times 4, and I'm going to hit the equals button, but at the end, I need to divide that answer by 3 because it's 4 thirds. So that gives me 3,053 and 63 hundredths. When I round to the nearest hundredths place, it was a 2, but there was an 8 behind it, and I need yards cubed. Some other ways to do the 4 thirds, um, you could do the 4 thirds first. So you could do 4 divided by 3 in your calculator. That will give you 1.3 repeating. Then multiply it times pi. Then you could do times 9 times 9 times 9, three times. That will still give you the same answer. And for the third volume formula that you need to be familiar with, it's volume of a pyramid. And we'll talk about two types of pyramids. But for volume of a pyramid, um, this formula is a little different, but it's one-third times a capital B times the height of the pyramid. And capital B, this is really important that you understand this, the capital B indicates the area of the base. And we'll talk about two types of pyramids. This pyramid is a, what they call a rectangular pyramid because the bottom is a rectangle shape. So you would have to find the area of that rectangle. Remember, area of a rectangle is length times width. Then you would multiply it times a third times the height. The other type of pyramid we'll talk about, and we'll see an example of that in a minute, but is a triangular pyramid where the base is a triangle. So find the volume of the pyramid. The formula, again, is one-third capital BH. So the first thing I'm going to do is find capital B. So the area of the base, which is a, a rectangle, is length times width. So that's 3 times 5, or 15. So I'm going to put 15 in for capital B. So volume, again, is 1 third times 15 times the height, which is 4. So then when you multiply this in your calculator, again, you do 1 divided by 3. Make sure you hit the Enter button first um, before you go on. Times 15 times 4, and you get an answer of 20 centimeters cubed. So you have to find the area of the base first, then multiply it times a third and times the height of the pyramid. This is a rectangular pyramid. The next image is the triangular pyramid, and this is kind of tough to draw, but hopefully you can see the depth here. So the base is a triangle. I'm kind of tracing it with this red pen, so take a look here. It's This is the base, and then you can see the faces uh, or I'm tracing the edges of the pyramid here that outline the faces. So the entire pyramid is nine feet tall. This is the height, but we have to find the area of the base. So again, remember the area, the base of a triangle is one half times little b times h. And this little b is basically, if you're just looking at a two dimensional triangle, this would be the little b and this is the height. So there's two heights here in this formula. First we have the height of just the triangle base, which you can see this is like laid down flat, it's four feet, and then the bottom, the base length of the triangle, the base triangle, is six feet. So this is one half times six times four, and that's 12. So the area of the triangle that is the base of this pyramid is 12, 12 feet squared, area is squared. And now we're going to use that, oops, remember I'll put it up here, the, the formula again was one-third big B times H, so big B is 12, one-third times 12 times 9, now the height of the entire pyramid. So in your calculator, again, 1 divided by 3 times 12 times 9 gives you 36 feet cubed. And if you want, you can label this area was feet squared. So 36 feet cubed would be the volume of that pyramid. So those are the only three formulas we focus on. Volume of a cone, volume of a sphere, and volume of a pyramid. So in class, we will work on our volume worksheet.